Do you want to learn to code your own cryptocurrency and build your own ICO? Hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own cryptocurrency on the Ethereum blockchain and sell it. I'll walk you through each step in the process where we will create our own ERC-20 token with a smart contract. We'll create a token sale smart contract, and we'll write tests against both of these contracts in order to ensure that the code is robust. And lastly, we'll create a token sale website where we can hold an ICO and allow people to purchase the tokens. So if you're interested, let's jump over the shoulder and get started. This video will be part one of a step-by-step -step tutorial series that I will be releasing over the course of several videos. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you can get alerts about those next videos when they come out. You can turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon below this video. This video will build upon fundamental blockchain knowledge. For example, it'll be helpful if you're already familiar with a few concepts like what the Ethereum blockchain is and you know have a basic understanding of how it works. It'll also be helpful if you know what a smart contract is and what it does. If you're not familiar with these concepts already, you can check out a tutorial that I have. This is a two hour tutorial that shows you how to build your first decentralized application step by step. And I have a slideshow in this tutorial that goes through some of those you know, concepts uh, individually and addresses them. And I've also got several other videos on the channel that talk about smart contracts and what they are and you know what the blockchain is and how it works. So you can find this video on my Twitter. It's pinned to the top of my Twitter feed. You can also follow along with me uh, for daily updates on Twitter at DAP University. I'll be talking about these concepts as we go. So it's not necessary for you to understand them fully before you get started. But the more knowledge you have, the better but I will be explaining them as we build our uh, token sale website step-by-step. Step. Here is the project that we're going to be building. We're going to create our own cryptocurrency called DAP token, named after you know this channel, DAP University. And we'll create a website where you can purchase DAP tokens. You can see this is the project right here. This is the website which is deployed to GitHub pages. So I'm not actually running this website locally. This is deployed uh, you know, to the web. And you can also see that the smart contracts to this project are talking to the Rinkeby test network. Now, we'll use a local blockchain to develop this project in the tutorial, but you can see here that I am actually connected to the Rinkeby test network with this account. Now the Rinkeby test network is, you know, a version of the main Ethereum network that is used for test purposes. And all of the ether that is exchanged on the Rinkeby test network is fake and is not really worth anything on the main network. And that's nice actually for our purposes because it means that we can deploy our projects to a test environment and send Ether without worrying about spending real money. Now we can look at some of the features of this website. We can see that there is a main form here which allows us to purchase tokens. We can select the number of tokens that we want. We can buy them. We'll see a MetaMask confirmation pop up here. And we can also see how many tokens exist and the number of tokens that have already been sold. We can see our account address down here that we are connected to the local blockchain, or excuse me, the test network. We can also see the price of the token, and we can see how many tokens that we currently own. Let's get a conceptual overview of what we're going to be building in this tutorial. First is the cryptocurrency itself. Ethereum allows you to create your own cryptocurrency on the blockchain with a standard called ERC-20. This standard allows you to mint your own token that can easily be transferred between wallets and sold on cryptocurrency exchanges with this ERC-20 standard. 
It's also the standard that's going to allow us to have a token sale in the form of an ICO like we'll be building in this tutorial. Now an ICO is a way for a business to raise capital by selling tokens that they've minted on the Ethereum blockchain. An ICO stands for an initial coin offering, and this is based on the traditional initial public offering that you might be familiar with from the stock market. The ICO that we'll be building in this tutorial will consist of you know, a website that we just saw, so that will be deployed to the web, and the smart contracts that govern our ICO and our token will be deployed to the blockchain. Well, let's talk about the ERC-20 standard that I've mentioned a few times already. ERC-20 is an API standard that governs how a token should be built. Now, you can find this standard that we'll look over here in a second on GitHub. This is the, uh, the Ethereum organization, and it comes from the Ethereum Improvement Proposals Repository. You can find this standard here as a markdown file. So let's take a look and see what this is all about. So like I said, ERC-20 is an API specification for how a token should be built. It's a community adopted standard that allows your tokens to get supported by you know, a variety of applications and uses. And we want to use this standard because we want our token that we're going to build to be compliant and widely accepted. For example, we want this token to be able to you know, be transferred from one wallet to another. We want the token to be bought and sold on a cryptocurrency exchange. And we want the token to you know, be able to be sold and an ICO like the one that we're going to build in this tutorial. So what does this specification look like? Now, this specification is essentially uh, you know, a specification of the structure of our smart contract. It dictates the functions that the smart contract must have, and it you know, provides some other suggested functionality that is nice to have, but ultimately optional. And it also dictates you know, certain events that our token must have, like a sell event. So let's take a look at that here. For example, the token can have a name. This is just a function that returns the name attribute of the token. And we can see that the name here is optional because ultimately our token doesn't have to have a name, but it's nice for it to have one. Same thing for a symbol. This might be the symbol that you would see on a cryptocurrency exchange. And in our case, our symbol is going to be DAP and our name is going to be DAP token. Let's look at some other functions here. Let's look at the transfer function. This is the function that is going to, you know, allow us to send our token uh, on the Ethereum blockchain from one account to another. Now this is a required function. This is something that our you know, token contract must have. And this is part of the standard of the ERC-20 specification. We can look at other things here. We can look at the events. This is a transfer and an approval event. So in Solidity, our smart contracts can emit events. Now, an event is something that you know a smart contract emits and a consumer can subscribe to in order to receive these events anytime they happen. In the case of this ERC-20 standard, the transfer event is a required feature, and this essentially allows a consumer to subscribe to our token uh, to know whenever a value has been transferred with the token. So for example, we want to, we want to implement the transfer event anytime we call the transfer function. 
And again, this is a required characteristic of our DAP token. And again, you can uh, visit this website yourself and read more about the uh, ERC-20 standard if you'd like to, straight from the source. But we will be implementing this in our tutorial as we go. Let's get a bird's eye view of the technical aspect of the project that we're going to be building. You know, what are the basic components of the tutorial that we're going to be building? Well, we'll have two smart contracts that we will develop. We'll have a smart contract for our actual token. This is the DAP token cryptocurrency that implements the ERC-20 standard that I just talked about. We'll have a, another smart contract, the token sale contract. This essentially is going to govern the token sale and the ICO part of our project. And then we'll have a token sale website, which will be, you know, consist of uh, just a simple index.html file and um, some basic JavaScript that we will write in order to uh, handle the sale of tokens and displaying balances and things like that. Basically everything that we just saw when we demoed the project in the first time. Now that we've seen, you know, a bird's eye view of everything that we're going to be building in this tutorial, let's go ahead and install all of the dependencies that we're going to need for our project so that we can jump in and start coding. The first dependency that we need is Node Package Manager, or NPM, and this comes bundled with Node.js. You can see if you have Node already installed by going to your terminal and typing node-v. If you need to install Node, you can install it with a command line tool like Homebrew. Or you can go to the Node.js website and download it directly. The next dependency is the Truffle framework. Truffle is a framework that's going to allow us to create decentralized applications on the Ethereum network. It's going to give us a suite of tools that allows us to write our smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. It also gives us a framework for testing our smart contracts. And it gives us a set of tools to deploy our smart contracts to the blockchain. We can also develop our client-side application inside of Truffle. You can install Truffle by going to your terminal and typing npm install g truffle. The next dependency is Ganache. Ganache is a local and memory blockchain that we will use for development purposes. You can install the Ganache by going to the Truffle Framework website and downloading Ganache directly. The next dependency that we're going to need is the MetaMask extension for Google Chrome. Now, in order to use the blockchain, we must connect to it. Remember, I said the blockchain is a network. We'll have to install a special browser extension in order to be able to use the Ethereum blockchain. And that's where MetaMask comes in. We'll be able to connect to our local Ethereum network with our personal account and interact with our smart contract by using MetaMask. Since we're going to be using the MetaMask extension for Chrome, you'll also need to install the Google Chrome browser if you don't have it already. To install MetaMask, you'll need to go to the Chrome Web Store and search for the MetaMask plugin. You will add it to Chrome. Once you've installed MetaMask, you should go to your Chrome extensions and ensure that MetaMask is enabled. You can also double check to see that it's working by going to your extensions bar and clicking on the little fox. Now the last thing that we need is some syntax highlighting for the Solidity programming language that we'll be using to write our smart contract. Most text editors and IDEs don't have syntax highlighting for Solidity yet, so we'll need to install some. I'm using Sublime Text, and I've downloaded the Ethereum package from Package Control. All right, that's it, guys. That's the end of the introduction for this tutorial series on how to create your own cryptocurrency and ICO. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications with the bell below so that you can see the next video in this series when it comes out. And if it's already out, then you can find a link to the next one at the end of this video so that you can keep binge watching and finish the tutorial. But until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.